job that you find that you can look around and say, hey, nobody else really wants to do that job. If you're going to humble yourself, be like Christ. Say, I'll go do that, Lord. I'll go do it. Christ, when it was announced in heaven that someone needs to die for the sins of mankind, Christ said, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll go. I'll die. I'll shed my blood. He humbled himself. He did the job that you and I don't do. <clears throat> Somebody who humbles themselves puts their desires on hold and work for someone else. That's humbling. That's humbling. I, I want to do it my way. I want my way. But a humble person says, you know what? I won't do it my way. I'll do it your way. That's humility. That's humble. First is what? No reputation. Reputation. Second is form of a servant. Form of a servant. He took on the form of a servant. Third is humble himself. And fourth is became obedient. Became obedient. He humbled himself and he became obedient unto death. Obedience. Now that's not a real popular word these days. Obedience. All right. Our our society doesn't like really teach obedience anymore. You don't learn it hardly anywhere. You don't learn it in schools. You don't learn it in uh, in the government section. Where do people learn obedience? I don't know. Um, what does this world think about obedience? Some of my thoughts are: uh, they teach you, hey, do your own thing, be your own person, don't follow anybody. That's the world's philosophy. Live your own dream. That's a philosophy you've heard from the world, right? Obedience is something that you've got to force on somebody. It's kind of our idea that if uh, you see a police officer, oh, you better obey because they're going to get you. <laughs> That's the idea that people have of obedience. This world has of obedience, right? Okay. And uh, how did Jesus obey? Was Jesus obedient? Mm -hmm. He was. He was. He was obedient. But not the way the world thinks of obedience. His obedience was different. In John 8, 29, it says, And he that sent me, and he that sent me is with me. And the Father hath left, not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Jesus always did what pleased who? God the Father. Always. Jesus was always obedient. Who was he obedient to? God the Father. God the Father. Uh, was his obedience always easy for him? No, it wasn't always easy. Was it easy for Jesus? No, it wasn't. Was it easy to fast, go fasting? No. Even it wasn't easy for Jesus to fast. Uh, many times, you know, he was weary on his journey. He went to the well in John chapter 4. And he was tired and hungry. It's not easy. Was it easy to walk miles and miles? No, it's not easy. Is it easy dealing with people? No, that's not easy. It's not easy. Was it easy for Jesus to go to the cross? No, no it was not. But he was obedient. He was obedient. Don't think that obedience has to be easy for you to do it. Obedience can be very difficult. It can be difficult. I want to recap these four things. One is he surrendered his reputation. He became a servant. He humbled himself and he was obedient to God. How can you apply these steps in your life so that you can have the mind of Christ? What about you? Are you willing to surrender your reputation? Can you really look at your life and see, you know, I, I take pride in this part of my life, and I, I if somebody doesn't, if somebody treats, you know, doesn't uh, appreciate me in this area, that really offends me. Are you concerned about your reputation? I would say most of us, it is difficult, but a person. Uh, 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 most of us do have a little bit of reputation that we want to be respected. 
in this area of our life. About a person that is concerned about their reputation, let's really think about what happens. You take somebody to an extreme, somebody that's really concerned about their reputation, what, uh, what are they going to be like? A person that's really concerned about their reputation, they're going to be like this. They're going to say, hey, stay back a little bit. Don't get too close to me. I don't want you to see any of my faults. A person that's concerned about reputation is going to be a little bit distant. You can't get close to somebody who's concerned about their reputation because they're just taking care of their reputation. Um, they put on a show for you that you'll like them. Well, if I do this and I do this and I do that, this person will like me then. And that's what I want. A, a, a person concerned about reputation is putting on a show. How about a shy person? You know what? A shy person is concerned about their reputation. They're afraid to do this or do that because they're afraid of what you're going to think about them. A person who's shy is thinking about themselves. They're concerned about what you're going to think. They're concerned about their reputation. So they do nothing, hoping that it doesn't, uh, that, that they don't get any scorn, they don't get any disapproval. They, they're, they're just kind of left alone because they're just so afraid. But it's a selfish form of thinking. It's a selfish form of thinking. All of these type of things are vain and empty. If you are concerned about your reputation, your life is going to have some emptiness to it. You're not going to feel close to people. Your life is going to feel a little bit vain and empty. Because you feel like, well, I can't really be myself. I can't open up my heart and let people see it because I've just got to keep up my reputation. And you won't feel closeness. When you're concerned about reputation, you'll have a hard time making friends. When you're concerned about reputation, you think about yourself. You won't have time to think about others. Give your reputation to God. And only be concerned if you're pleasing Him. There's only one person you need to be concerned with your reputation. That is God the Father. We're in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And we're looking at how one could have the mind of Christ. Give your reputation. The first thing is your reputation laid in the hands of God. If somebody comes to you and says, boy, I think you're a sloppy person. That would be, that would be hurtful. I've had it said to me before. I know. And I go to God and I say, God, they said I'm a sloppy person. And God says, well, I love you anyhow. You know, and, and, and work on cleaning this up. And work on doing that. All right, but uh, my concern, you know, what's, what, when you give your reputation up, you're just concerned with how your Heavenly Father thinks of you. What about you being a servant? You being a servant. First is, give, have you given up your reputation? Second is, uh, how about yourself? To have the mind of Christ, are you willing to be a servant? Your flesh does not want to serve others. Your flesh loves to serve itself. Uh, your flesh wants to be served, wants others to serve you. Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That's not the way of Jesus Christ. If you are here looking to be served, you're, gonna not find, you're not going to find an easy spot in the kingdom of God. Because God's kingdom says you serve, you serve. When you neglect yourself to serve God by serving others, you are counting on God to meet your needs. It's an act of faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. But if I say, okay, I am going to do this and serve others, and Lord, you know what I'd like to do. You know what I wish was done for me, but I'm not going to do this for me. I'm going to do what I serve, serve you, Lord. I'm going to put my, my needs aside, my wants aside, whatever it is, put it aside, and I'm going to trust you, dear God, to meet it. 
a husband.